We believe that the market is going to move to the periphery and also move to more complexity. And, and by that I mean it'll continue to expand into geographies where the secondary market hasn't been active. You know, we've done some deals in Africa or with African funds. We've for a long time done deals in Asia, uh, including China and India, as well as Central Europe. But it'll continue to push out in that direction. Um, it'll also continue to push into other strategies that haven't been historically associated with secondary, so real assets, uh, whether that's infrastructure or energy funds or those types of things, real estate um, will also increasingly become a part of the market. On the complexity side, um, you know, there's just a lot of appetite from buyers to do deals that, that, have, that, that need more structuring because in principle they're gonna get better returns from those transactions compared to doing more standard deals. So we've seen that with uh, spin outs from the banks, We've seen that with GP restructurings where you know, secondary capital is going into very mature funds to try to help find a solution for LPs and GPs. So you know, in addition to all of the standard deal flow, we're gonna see a lot more complexity as well as these deals in farther flung geographies. Last year, 2013, was a fantastic year. We estimate that the market was at $27.5 billion of transaction activity. Um, we've had a, you know, a, 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 a flying start to 2014, and certainly if we continue along the trajectory that we are now, we should expect to exceed those totals as, uh, as we move into 14. And you know, the, main, the main driver for that is, is in, the, in the standard funds market, people are just trading funds more frequently. There's a term that we use, velocity. You know, the velocity of trading has increased over time. You know, historically, it was probably 25 to 3%. Um, it's currently probably plus or minus 5% for a given fund. Over time, that'll probably go up to 7 or 8%, and that will really you know, effectively double market volume over some period of time from where we are currently. So we're very bullish about the prospects for continued growth in the market. So, you know, deals come in all shapes and sizes. But, but, but ultimately, there are really three, there have been consistently three types of transactions. Um, you know, large deals from financial institutions, tail end deals from fund to fund, and then um, traditional private equity investors doing portfolio management. And in different ways, each of those you know, drivers has continued. The financials went quiet to some degree uh, last year. Uh, there had been a lot of activity in 11 and 12. But with the passage of the Volcker legislation in the U.S., um, a lot of, you know, almost every big bank that has, you know, U.S. activities um, is really looking at shedding riskier assets and shedding private equity assets, and that's going to lead to a big spike in um, deals from financial institutions over the next, let's say, you know, 9 to 12 months. Um, tail end deals, you know, there's a lot more receptivity to doing those. Those are typically very mature funds where um, the, 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 it's very frequently a fund of funds and they have an older vehicle that has lots of funds but relatively they don't NAV and now there's a solution, you know, we've done a ton of those over the, over the last couple of years but those are fairly frequent but we think that there will be more of those deals going forward and, um, and in this market where pricing is very strong many traditional investors are looking to secondaries um, as, a, as, a, as a viable tool because they think that they can sell at relatively low discounts and that helps them to shape their portfolio you know, more quickly than, than, than other ways that they would have to do that. So, so we see very strong um, growth drivers from those, from those three types of deals. What we've also seen um, over the last uh, 18 to 24 months is the GP restructuring market really began to grow and that's related to uh, this, this very large stock of very mature assets that are managed by GPs who in some cases have raised new funds but in other cases have not. And secondary capital is really being used to unlock those situations. And, um, and you know, that's, we estimate there's roughly $100 billion of those types of assets out there. And even if a fraction of that comes to the secondary market uh, with some regularity over the next couple of years, then you know, that will continue to drive, to drive growth and drive deal activity. I think the, you know, the, the, that's good news for buyers. I think what's, what's, what's less good news for buyers is that returns are definitely lower. There's much more competition for these transactions. Certainly in the standard funds market, returns uh, are at probably historic lows, you know, 10, 12 
percent we see people underwriting to. But on a relative basis, you know, in this interest rate environment, you know, 11, 12, 13 percent is pretty good compared to what you get, you know, if you put your money into T-bills. So, so there's been an, an absolute decrease in returns and return expectations, but still secondaries as an asset class is performing pretty well for investors. The market's grown a lot over the last decade um, for investors that have well-defined portfolios and who uh, want to run a structured process, the market does a very good job. So if somebody wants to do a big deal, hire an advisor, you know, run a two-stage auction, the market is very, very good at accommodating them. What the market does not do well, however, is work with small LPs who have small positions. You know, it's a little bit hit and miss. If somebody has a $5 million position in a KKR fund of some sort, maybe they'll be able to sell it. If they have a $5 million position in, in a less well-known GP, they, they would certainly have more trouble selling it. And I think the market as a whole is trying to find solutions for how do you support small, non-standard deal flow. And that'll take time to develop and that'll, that'll, that'll take time to, to work. But we think that that's a great opportunity you know, for us as a firm, but also just for the market as a whole to really try to provide that sort of solution to um, secondary players as well, to, 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 to LPs as well.